Just a vessel and nothing more. When you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. Take the stage, Lord. Have you way? We're just a vessel. to see you glorified. Take the stage, have your way. I'm just a vessel, I'm just a vessel, and nothing more. When you're done, when you're done please. Good morning, Jesus. How's Baltimore? Psalm 122 says, I was glad when it said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I know we all are excited to be in God's presence this morning. Hallelujah. 
And to our guests online, I know you're excited to be with us this morning. Come on, celebrate our God. He's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us give God praise this morning and just bless his name and say, God, I thank you for making me to be here this morning. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. I thank you, oh God, for bringing me here today. I thank you for another opportunity to be able to fellowship with everyone, to be able to worship you, oh God. I thank you. I give you praise. Come on, raise your voice and just say, God, I thank you. God, I give you praise. I'm alive and well. It's by your grace. It's by your mercy. It's by your goodness, oh God. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord. I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. I give you all honor and adoration. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray this morning and say, God, take the stage this morning. Take center stage, oh God. I have come to meet with you. I ask, oh God, that you meet with me at the point of my needs. I ask, oh God, that you take control of everything, everything that is within me. Oh God, I ask that you have your way in the name of Jesus. I ask that you give me listening ears so that the word, as the word comes, it will pierce through my heart in the name of Jesus. I ask, oh God, that everything that I have committed into your hands, that I will receive my blessings today. I will receive my answers today in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Lord God, we commit this service into your hands. We ask, oh God, that you take control, take center stage in the name of Jesus from beginning to the end. Let your name alone be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. I hand you over to true worship.
your hands in surrender to Almighty God. Because there's none like Him in all the earth. Come on, say sweet words to the Lord.
Just go ahead and begin to give God praise, give Him glory, celebrate the King of Kings, worship Him, adore Him, exalt His holy name. Our God is good, our God is great. There is no God like Him. Give Him all the worship. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We give you adoration. Thank you for coming here to worship with us today, Lord Jesus. We bless your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have worship. In the mighty name of Jesus we have worship. Welcome to church this morning. Put your hands together for yourselves. And online audience, put your hands together for yourselves too. Welcome to church. Amen. This morning, before we take our seats, we're going to be praying two prayers. One, specifically for the Word of God that will be coming to us. I'll be praying for the servant of God. Um, Amos 3, 7 talks about that God will not do anything except He reveals it to His servant, the prophet. We're going to be saying that the servant of God will be bringing the Word to us today. That God would anoint her, reveal His Word to her. She will be speaking as His prophet today in the name of Jesus. Let's go ahead and pray that prayer. Saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, your daughter bringing your word to us. Lord, she will stand as your prophet. That anointing to flow, free flow with your word, specifically as you're sending it to us. Lord, we will have it today. We will receive it today. Our lives will be transformed by it because you're sending it to us through her. Anoint her with your grace, boldness, confidence in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Isaiah 55, verse 10 to 11, it talks about the word of the Lord that it does not return to him void. It accomplishes everything he sends it. We're going to be praying this morning that the word of God will not leave us the way it finds us. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and speak about the word of God that you're hearing today. Say, Father, send me your word. Specific word. Direct word. Words that will revive me. Words that will change me, O oh God, for my good. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Why don't you put your hands together for Jesus, take your seat, and let's listen to JH be revealed. God bless you. Church and welcome to Jesus House Baltimore. My name is Flora Adebanjo and this is JHB Revealed. Please pay attention as I bring you the following announcements. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, both online and in church, we welcome you. Jesus House Baltimore is a community of people of many nations and tribes, challenging people to maximize their God-given potentials. Please listen for a call that will be made on your behalf during the service. Thank you and God bless you. 
join our live group meetings on Thursday, February 17th. In addition to our community groups, JHB Live Group also features affinity groups. If you're passionate about sports, information tech, cooking, medicine, entrepreneurship, real estate, fashion, and more, there is a live group you can plug into. To register, please stop after service at the back of the sanctuary. Our next solution night will hold on site and online on Thursday, February 24th at 7 p.m. If you're joining us online, please prepare your communion elements at home using either bread or crackers and any kind of juice. Attention, the Ruby's Virtual Power Circle Check-in will hold on Saturday, February 19th at 12 p.m. For further inquiries, please email the address shown on the screen. The Fusion Ministry is excited to announce the beginning of the next premarital counseling session. The six-week session will begin virtually via Zoom on Saturday, February 19th at 9 a.m. Interested engaged couples should please send an email to the address shown on the screen with premarital counseling in the subject line. Please note that the Believers and Baptism Department will hold our next baptism class on site on Saturday, March 5th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Water baptism will take place immediately after the class for members who have received their full COVID-19 vaccination. To register, please fill out a baptism request form from the Church Center app or the Church website. The next Alpha course will hold on-site and online starting on Tuesday, March 8th at 7 p.m. For more information and to register, please visit the address shown on the screen. The Alpha course is a seven-week course. It's a great way to learn the basics of Christian faith and strengthen your faith in Christ. JHB is 25 this September. Come on and let's tell the story together. Please share your JHB experience by sending your earlier years JHB pictures to the address shown here. Church, please note that everyone is required to wear a mask on the church premises at all times. Thank you and God bless you as you do so. Coming up next is the word. As I wrap up today's announcements, will you kindly send today's service broadcast link to your friends and everyone on your contact list? Please forward and subscribe to the JHB YouTube link, Facebook link, or whatever platform you're watching this service on. Get super creative. Share the link on your Instagram page or WhatsApp status. God bless you. Did you miss any of these important announcements and want to stay connected with us? Visit the church website as shown on the screen. And please, follow us on all our social media outlets. Thank you for your attention. From JHP Studios, my name is Flora Adebanjo. Please enjoy the rest of your day and a wonderful service session. See, I, I just I just thank God though. I won't lie to you. The COVID really, really, really affected me. Oh, for, it was so 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 ah man. I don't pray for my enemy to go through what I went through. Amen. Oh, I, I just I man. could tell I could tell from the way they sent me and my wife back at the entrance. Man, that, that's why it's so annoying. When I told oh, my friend, the other guy I told you about, I told him, I said, Hey, this was what I went through. Please guys get vaccinated. I told him. He said, "No, it's because I'm not too. I, I was careless." You think you think you can be very careful not to catch um, COVID? 
that, that's what he, that, that's, that's his own mindset. That's the least that I mean, people, I don't know. It's, it's difficult to talk to adults. Now, he got cold. He's not calling me. Hello? Jeff, I can't breathe. <laughs> It sounds, it sounds, it sounds weird and happy. It will be fine. It will be fine. I mean, I was, I was totally scared when they turned, when they turned us back. The way those um staffs were dressed, like they were going to the moon or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I was like, okay, well, now that know. we know why we can't. Come. I know. You know, they, they, they have to take everybody. We were in one big, like, like a big space. You know, that their beds right there, right? Yeah. You know, I saw the way they were packing people up. We're packing people up. So now tell me how are you feeling? How is everything now? Oh well, you know, thank God for my I mean, thank God for the whole process. It was I'm mean, you know what we were planning? We were planning you were you were part of the plan for the for the thirty and we just got the news and just like we it was it was waiting for us to get the news, the whole thing just started going. So, but we thank God. We thank God they're getting better. We thank God. I mean, I don't feel, I don't feel no type of way. I don't. I, I'm just recovering and recovering fine. So and that's it. I, I was, I, I was your work. Oh come on, man! I'm back. I'm back on my feet. Though I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting there gradually, but I'm working. I'm getting it done. You know, I don't go to office anymore. I work from home. Oh, that's talk cool. to my clients over the phones and things are going on well now. Okay. Yes, I'm that's getting better. That's the reality of COVID. Pushed everybody back. Now you can do what you yeah. want to do from home, even I mean sit on the cupboard and do everything. That's You're right. And how about yours too? Well, I mean, for me, my I was just focused on I was only focused on surviving. 2020, 2021, I didn't really do much, you know why, because because of the whole process. We couldn't even get appointments because of the people that had covid yeah. so you know it was like we lost the whole 2020 2021 but no that's not that's not what that's not how i see it now right now i see it like god they really made that happen because we have a testimony in 2022 that's it and this is 2022, 2022 we do whatever we want to do we we we're going to recover how that's how i see it that's yeah. that's definitely how i see it trust me i didn't recover. i didn't lose anything that's what i that's what i say mm -hmm. i didn't lose because 2022 gave me the chance to recover that's it so that's the spirit that's and that's what we are using this year oh trust yeah me. that's how we mm -hmm. and you don't know what is going on in the news right now well gosh not again what now <sighs> this pandemic thing again on the news honestly i can't deal with this no more. Tell me about it. Me too. It's over two years now. We're still in this whole pandemic thing. Not, you know, initially nobody took it serious. Mm -hmm. But now, not only is it serious, it has so taken over people's mental state. Too much. A whole lot. So much so that it's just devastating. It is. People will be there saying, oh my God, this is going to hand full. You know, trying to combat homeschooling with parenting. Go, yeah. everything was on lockdown. Schools were closed. Daycare were closed. Yeah. So many things. So much so that we can't even, you know, tend to figure things around. Yeah. Honestly, I tell you what. <laughs> Teachers' jobs, I don't know how they are doing it, but I tell you, their job is heavy. It's so huge. Oh, yes. I mean, Ooh. I don't even know. The way they pay teachers is not enough. They are underpaid for no. all the hard work that they do. I mean, look at this pandemic. Parents now understand more than ever how hard it is to take care of kids. I mean, these kids are too much. <laughs> Speaking about kids. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You know, prior to the whole COVID thing coming on. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. <sighs> you know, prior to this whole COVID thing, myself and Jeff were just planning on conceiving, mm. having, you know, believing God for our twins. Mm -hmm before this whole COVID struck, but it's been, it's been, it's been a whole lot for us. I remember, I know, oh. I didn't want to say much about it. I'm sorry.
and not only that, just around the summer period, Jeb broke down. Mm. He caught COVID. So at that point, even my prayer point changed to God helping us to conceive to God, preserving my husband. Mm. It was tough, I tell you. I can imagine. I can imagine. Just right around the corner, one night we were just, you know, hanging out and then he started complaining of headaches, you know, how that he wasn't feeling well. Then at night, he was, you know, complaining that he couldn't breathe. Mm. I thought it was a joke, but before you knew it that night, we all landed in the emergency room. Mm. Oh, I tell you, the sight of him on that ventilator machine, right on that stretcher in the emergency room, oh my God. It was so, so devastating. You know, but then my prayer point changed to God just healing him. But then looking at him now, well, thank God he, you know, he's back on his feet. He recovered. He's coming back around. But I can only be positive. I tell him, my friend, thank God that God has preserved us. Thank God that God has given us life. And you know, our family is all together again. That's awesome. So, uh, you guys trying to have another child now? No, not right now. I'm telling you because that whole thing, man, it drained me. Not only physically, emotionally, yeah. even spiritually. Mm -hmm. You know, having to go over that whole process again, it was a whole lot. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. So right now, that is kept aside. You know, we're just focusing on our lives, our family. Yes, we have Peter, so we have something to thank God for. So we're just going to live our lives. You know what, my friend? Enough about me. So how about you and Mario? How's Mario doing? I see he's um, getting along as well. You see, he's into the sports. You know, we thank God for that. That's one of the things that he has that keeps him going, you know? You know, he used to be very, very active. But since this cancer, I mean, he's not been the same at all. Mm. But he's still trying. He's not his regular self yet, so. We thank God. Yeah, we say that. So, does that mean that you are casting the 40th birthday that's just around the corner for him? Not a chance. What? Oh, girl. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. No. But, but I, I, but nothing, okay? okay. COVID 19 <laughs> has taken too much out of our lives already. Mm. Tell me about that. I okay. mean, Everything in our lives had to be stopped. Schools, you know, everything was shut down. We stopped going to parties. We even stopped having business meetings. Uh, I mean, you know the annoying part of it? You can't even greet each other again. That is true. Speaking of, you can't even recognize people because everybody's all maxed out. Nobody. Can <laughs> but you can't smile. Exactly. You know me that I'm, I can smile for the whole world. Mm -hmm. I can't even smile no more because mm -hmm. everybody's all maxed out. Mm -hmm. But it's okay. What can we do? People don't even come to church anymore. Wow. Now everybody watches things virtually and even why, while things have improved, People are still watching church online in this season. So we're gonna do a new thing. Yes, indeed. Do things different. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That is that's so true. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, God is really about to do a new thing. Why? The party is postponed but not cancelled. Mm -hmm. Postponement and cancellation are two. Different, different yes. things. You got a point there, my friend. Right. Yes, indeed. So you sure to got a point. point. I mean, the Bible says in Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, mm. we have to put, let the past be the past. Preach, okay? A new thing I God is doing you. in our lives. Yes. All right? So we must move forward in this season. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Are yeah. you with me? I am with Are you going you with me? 2022 yes, is indeed. our year of new things. New things. And guess what? It's a matter of time yes. and it will all 
be evident to all. Are you How about me? having a toast to that? Yes! Yes, girl! Yes. <laughs> Cheers to new life. Yes. Cheers to new us. New you. Amen. New me. New you. New us. Amen. <laughs>2020 it is you who was with us in 2021 and you are still here with us in 2022 for when the enemy came in like a flood you lifted up a standard against him and we're standing here to say thank you blessed be your name oh god let the living praise the lord come on let everything that has breath praise the lord Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. True worship and the apostles blessed me so much this morning. That worship was amazing. Thank you. God bless you and replenish you all in Jesus' name. That was worship. That was worship. A few announcements before we go into the word today. 
If you're joining us online, worshiping with us today, we welcome you to Jesus House Baltimore. We want you to use the chat function on the platform from which you're watching us and participate in the service. We love it that you've joined us today and we know your life will not remain the same. Thank you. Let's listen to the announcements. Solution Night will hold on-site and online on Thursday, February 24th at 7 p.m. You know what it is. It's a time when you come before God and you don't leave empty. That's what Solution Night is about. We tarry until God blesses us. We hold on to the horns of the altar. Amen. So let's be here Thursday, February 24th at 7 p.m. JHB Live Group Meetings continues on Thursday, February 17th. In addition to our community groups, you now know that um, the live group also features affinity groups, affinity groups. So if you're passionate about sports, about IT, about medicine, entrepreneurship, whatsoever passion you have, there is a live group you can plug into. Please let's make use of this. Don't do life alone. Life is not meant to be done alone. Life is meant to be done, especially as believers, as a community. Amen. To register, please stop by at the back of the sanctuary after today's service. The rubies in the house, rubies? Yeah, you have a virtual power circle check-in this Saturday, February 19th at 12 p.m. For login details, please email rubies at jesushousebaltimore.org. The next virtual premarital counseling session begins this Saturday, February 19th at 9 a.m. Interested, engaged couples, please send an email to fusion at jesushousebaltimore.org and put premarital counseling. All right. There you go. Can you put your hands together and welcome the presence of the Lord? He just made a debut. <laughs> That has to be God. <laughs> Please send an email to fusion at jesushousebaltimore.org and put premarital counseling in the subject line. If you're yet to be baptized by immersion, the next baptismal class will hold on Saturday, March 5th at 9 a.m. We will need the proof of your COVID-19 vaccination for baptism by immersion. So to register, please fill out a baptismal form on the church center app or visit the church website. Praise the Lord. If you don't mind, please let's take our phones and send to the link for today's service to all on our contact list. Let's do the work of an evangelist. Amen. Let's do that. I'll give you 30 seconds. Let's do that. Push send to that JHB um, text that you get. You can just push send to, to them. Send that same link to them and they'll be able to watch the service. Amen. Our senior pastors are not in the house this morning. They are doing great though. They are just out of town. So let's appreciate them in absentia this morning. All right. Let's go. Are we ready for the word this morning? Last week we started the series, what? What was our series title? Thank you. Sustaining Momentum Series. And for the sake of those who were not part of this service last week, let me provide a brief recap for continuity purposes. We said that when God sends a fresh word, his word sets us in motion or creates momentum in us, and his expectation is that you and I sustain that momentum, correct? We define momentum as forward motion, and we define to sustain as to keep something going or to keep it up. Somebody say keep it up. So to sustain momentum means to keep the forward motion going or to keep it up. Look at your neighbor and say, keep it up. We said that it is not enough to start well and start strong in the month of January. It's not enough to stand, start expectant and excited in the month of January about the new thing that God has promised to do and then begin to flutter and flail in the March, month of March. That the way to keep on going, and the way to keep on carrying the fire, the way to rev it up, the way to take things higher, is to do it intentionally and deliberately. To put the work to it until December so that you and I can testify. Amen? And you will testify in the name of Jesus. I said this year, just look at yourself. Take a look at yourself. That is the last time you will see yourself the way you see yourself. Yes? By the month of December this year, you will have a tangible testimony. A notable miracle will have been done in your life because you will do what? Sustain the momentum. Amen. 
And we looked at the power of momentum. We said, why is it important to keep the momentum going? And we talked about, number one, accomplishment. That achieving your goals will depend on your sustaining your momentum. We said the end of a thing is better than the beginning because it is at the end that you graduate. It is at the end that you get the prize. Amen? The second thing we talked about is the fact that we leverage opportunities that come our way when we keep momentum going. We are able to take advantage of the opportunities that come our way because the Bible told us in Ecclesiastes 9:11 that the race is not toward the swift or the battle to the strong, nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or even favor to the learned. But what? Time and chance happens to them all. And lastly, we talked about the fact that when you maintain or you keep momentum, you are able to effect change. Changing the old for the new only happens when you keep the momentum going. Praise the Lord. And so today is part two of Sustaining Momentum series. And we're going to go right back to our scripture text only as a reference for the topic today. The book of 2 Kings chapter 13 from verse 14 to 19. I'm reading the ERV version. 2 Kings 13, 14 to 19 ERV. If you have it, please put it on the screen so that we can read together. If not, I'm going to run real quick because there's much for us to talk about. Can we read together? Let's go. Elisha became sick, and later he died from this sickness. King Jehoash of Israel went to visit Elisha. Jehoash cried for him and said, My father, my father, is it time for the chariot of Israel and its horses? Jehoash took a bow and some arrows. Then Elisha said to the king of Israel, put your hand on the bow. Jehoash put his hand on the bow. Then Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. That is, he gave him divine assistance. Elisha said, open the east window. Jehoash opened the window. Then Elisha said, shoot. Jehoash shot. Then Elisha said, this is the Lord's arrow of victory over Aram. You will defeat the Arameans at Afek until you destroy them. Elisha said, take the arrows. Jehoash took the arrows. Then Elisha said to him, hit on the ground. Jehoash hit the ground three times. Then he stopped. The man of God was angry with Jehoash. Elisha said, you should have hit five or six times. Then you will have defeated Aram until you destroyed it. But now you will defeat Aram only three times. <laughs> My topic today is becoming unstoppable. Becoming unstoppable. That will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. I said in this 2022, you will be unstoppable. You will reach your goal. You will achieve that which God has ordained for you to achieve in the name of Jesus. I have discovered that to become a success in life, one must resolve to be unstoppable. Unstoppable in your mind, unstoppable in pursuing your dreams, unstoppable in reaching your goals, unstoppable in running the race that God has set before you, unstoppable in maximizing your God-given potential and becoming all that God has ordained for you to be. What does it mean to be unstoppable? To be unstoppable is to be impossible to stop or prevent. It is to be impossible to stop or prevent. To be unstoppable is to have the wherewithal to reach the finish line despite obstacles along the way. Because obstacles are too a million <laughs> in the world we live in. To be unstoppable is to be unbeatable. It is to be unconquerable. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. It is to be insurmountable. I said you will be unbeatable. You will be unconquerable. You will be insurmountable in the name of Jesus. One of the reasons why many of us lose momentum is because of obstacles. Yes, an obstacle is an impediment. And the goal of an obstacle is to limit you, to hinder you, or to totally halt your progress. But brothers and sisters, obstacles are a part of life. Yes. They are otherwise known as difficulties. Have you ever experienced anyone like that? Anything like that? Troubles. Fear. 
affliction, opposition, adversity, challenges, stumbling blocks, discouragement, disappointment, losses, sickness, obstacles. The goal of obstacles is to stop or limit your progress. Bad news, those kind of things. They come to test the stuff that you and I are made of. Obstacles come to stretch us, to challenge us. But for the child of God, I want to let you know, no matter how big the obstacle is, we serve a God who is bigger than every obstacle that may come your way. Today, this morning in praise and worship, we called him a mighty God. And the name that he is called is Almighty. No obstacle can withstand our God. Jesus said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. I have overcome every obstacle that may come your way. Can somebody shout amen? amen? Obstacles, I want you to know as children of God, are only part of the raw materials that God uses to build our destinies. For Romans chapter 8 verse 28 tells us, and we know that all things work together. The good, the bad, and the ugly. For those who love the Lord and are the called, are you the called according to his purpose? So that thing that seems like it's coming to stop you, that thing that looks like it's coming to halt your progress, that thing that looks like maybe sometime in March it's rearing its ugly head, the doctor's report that is giving you fear and agitation, that anxiety over your marriage or over your children, whatsoever it is you're encountering in your business or in your career, I want you to know that whatsoever it is you go through, as long as you are called by the name of Jehovah and you are his child and you are in him and he is in you, it will work together for your good. I said it will work together for your good. Oh, do you believe it on this side? I said it will work together for your good in the name of Jesus. Perhaps that is why James said in James 1, 2 to 4, I'm reading the message version, James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. He said, it, he said consider it a sheer gift, friends. When tests and challenges come at you from all sides, because sometimes it's like it's coming from all sides. Yes, yeah, sometimes everywhere you look, it's one issue or the other. Sometimes it's like you can't catch a break. Sometimes it's like when it rains, it pours. He said, when it comes to you from all sides, he says, you know that under pressure, listen, listen to what he said, under pressure. Nobody likes pressure, but he's saying that under pressure, whenever your marriage is under pressure, whenever your career is under pressure, whenever your business is under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open. You are able to exercise your faith. You are able to lean on your faith. You are able to trust in God because you know you have no other help but him. Your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. That is when we know what you are made of. That's why I said obstacles only come to show you what you are made of. He says, so don't try to get out of anything prematurely. No. No. God set it for a purpose. God did not send COVID, but God allowed COVID for a purpose. He says, let it do its work so you can become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. I love it when Paul said it like this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 8 to 9 and then verse 16 to 18. Again, I'm reading the message version. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 to 9, then 16 to 18. He said, we've been surrounded and battered by troubles, but we're not demoralized. We're not sure what we're going to do, but we know that God knows what to do. He says, we've been spiritually terrorized, but God hasn't left our side. He said, we've been thrown down, but we haven't broken. He said, so we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside, it looks like things are falling apart for us, on the inside, where God is making Making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. He said, These hard times, listen to what he said, are small potatoes compared to becoming good times. Ha! He says, The lavish celebration has been prepared for us. He said, There is far more here than meets the eye. He said, The things that we now see today, they will be gone tomorrow. He says, But the things we can't see now, they will last forever. I don't know what you see right now that is threatening to stop you, even though you're in the month of February. I I want you to take a good look at it because it's the last time you are going to say it because God is doing a new thing in your life. God is making a way in the wilderness. God is causing streams to burst forth in the desert. I want you to say bye-bye. 
yesterday, today is a new day. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To be unstoppable is to be an overcomer. I see you overcoming every obstacle. So the question is, how can I become unstoppable in 2022? We're now looking at how to become unstoppable. And I want to use the story of a man that I really love in the Bible. I'm going to use the book of Nehemiah. It's one of my favorite books in the Bible. I find Nehemiah's story very inspiring and very instructive. If you're going to lead anything, whether it's your home, it's your business, it's in your career, if you're going to be a leader, please study the book of Nehemiah. God poured a lot into that book. And so we're going to be gleaning some pointers from Nehemiah this morning on how to become unstoppable. So let's hear pointers from Nehemiah. To be unstoppable, number one, run with God. Run with the book of Nehemiah chapter one from verse one to four and then verse 11. I'm using the message version, message version. Thank you. It says the memoirs of Nehemiah son of Hakaliah. So in short, his name was Mr. Nehemiah Hakaliah. <laughs> it was the month of Kislev. Yeah, so anybody who says they really can't pronounce Bumi Banjo, they should try Nehemiah Hikaliah. <laughs> Woo! It was the month of Kislev in the 20th year. At the time, I was in the palace complex at Susa. Hanani, one of my brothers, had just arrived from Judah with some fellow Jews. I asked them about the conditions among the Jews there who had survived the exile and about Jerusalem. They told me the exile survivors who are left there in the province are in bad shape. Conditions are appalling. The wall of Jerusalem is still rubble. The city gates are still cinders. When I heard this, I sat down and wept. I mourned for days. What was he doing? Fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And in verse 11, he says, Oh, master, talking to God, listen to me. Listen to your servant's prayer. And yes, to all your servants who delight in honoring you. And make me what? Successful today. So that I get what I want from the king. He said, for I was cupbearer to the king. Make me what? Successful. Make me what? unstoppable. Make me what? An overcomer. Make me what? An achiever. Make me successful today so that I get what I want, so that I achieve my goals in 2022. Make me. Because only God can make you. Only God has the power and the capacity, the ability and the wherewithal to make anybody. So no matter what it is that we want to do, no matter how he, it looks like People can help us. I want you to know that the joker to your issue is with God. Nehemiah decided to go to God. If I were Nehemiah, maybe I wouldn't have gone to God first, like we do in the 21st century. He said, because I was the cup bearer to the king, maybe, who sent him? He can't go to the king, maybe. But maybe he will have gone to the person in charge of building matters in the king's palace and said, hey, draw me a plan. Listen to what's going on with the wall in Jerusalem. I believe that as soon as I heard Hanani talk about this thing, something began to move in me. This cannot be so. Things cannot happen like this. I have something to do. God has called me to do something. In 2022, he's given me a mission. He's given me a vision. He's given me something. He's laid something on my heart. He said, ah, he will have gone to the king's maybe builder to say, draw me a plan. Let me see exactly how we can strategize. Maybe he will have gone to the masons and say, how? How do we put everything together? Maybe he will have gone to the accountant and said, draw me a budget. Let me see exactly what it's going to take to build or rebuild the Jerusalem wall. But Nehemiah did nothing like that. What did he do? Nehemiah ran to God. If God is not your foundation, everything you build will crumble. You and I may run after dreams. We may run after goals all we want. If God does not send us, we will never reach our destination. Many of us are running and we're taking on things that God did not sanction. Because we didn't go to God. At the end of the day, we now begin to say, God, why didn't it succeed? After all, Mr. A's is succeeding. Mr. B's is succeeding. How come mine isn't succeeding? And God said, I do not have, I, you know what, what I ordain, I sustain. If I didn't ordain it, I won't sustain it. By the way, it's bad for you, do you know? Because we never went to God. 
Nehemiah did not go to anybody else. He went to God. The question I have for you today is, are you still going to God? He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is our strength. He is our rock. He is our way maker. He is our burden bearer. He is our help. He is our shield. He is our buckler. He is our hiding place. He is our strength. He is our grace. Our exceeding great reward. He is everything you and I may need to run this race called life. You want to be unstoppable? Please, first things first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the others shall be added. Everything we're looking for, there are additions, only additions. There are only additions. Nehemiah got a word that created some momentum in him, and the first thing he did was to face God. He knew the secret for success would be in his connection to the power of God. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 5, John 15, 5, the Passion Translation says, I am the sprouting vine and you are my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. Can I hear an amen? amen? But when you live separated from me, he says you are powerless. We need power to run the race. We need power to be unstoppable. Can you just imagine somebody who they say get set, go, and he lacks power? He is already a failure on arrival before the journey began. God said, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you stay joined to me and I stay joined to you, then you will produce lots of fruit. But you cannot do anything without me. Somebody say nothing. No. Say zero. No. Say nada. That is what people achieve when they are not connected to God. God is our power source. Has it ever happened to you that you thought you plugged your phone in, your device, at night, and you woke up in the morning ready to use the phone and it was dead? Why? Because you didn't know that it had disconnected from the power source. And so it's unfruitful. It's not able to do the thing that you want it to do. You woke up in the morning and you wanted to use your laptop, but because it wasn't charging, Hey, many lives are not charging because they are disconnected from the power source. And yet they want to achieve the destination. How is that going to happen? When a car runs out of gas, it's not going to get anywhere. You may have dreams for that car of where it's going to take you to, but it will never achieve its destination. It has lost momentum completely and absolutely. It will never take you to where the places that you were supposed to go so that you can become all that God has called you to do. Because to be because of the fact that it lacks gas. Somebody say, I won't run out of gas. In 2022, I will not run out of gas. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 2.9, 1 Samuel 2.9, he says he will guard the feet of his saints, but the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. We don't prevail by the strength of our muscles. No, 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 no. Nobody prevails by physical strength. I know you feel strong. I know you feel agile. I know you can take anything. I know you are saying like Caleb, give me this mountain. But Caleb never said give me this mountain outside of God. He knew the God who had called him and he still remained connected to him even at 85. How about you and I? How old are you? Where have you gotten to yet that you are giving up on God right now? No matter how good the business is, if that business is not sanctioned by God, it will not be good for you. These are the things I tell myself. The Bible says, They that wait upon the Lord, Isaiah 40, 31, shall renew there. They shall mount up with wings like, they shall run and not be. They shall run and not be. They shall walk and not. When Nehemiah ran to God, it opened up the realm of uncommon favor for Nehemiah. <laughs> Do you need favor? Everywhere you and I go, even when we go to school, we need favor. Uncommon favor. Favor that you will look at and say, ah, when I left home today, this isn't how I thought things would plan out. People that I did not know are helping me. Strangers are obeying my voice. Help us standing up from left, right, and center. Lord, what is going on? It's because you're with me. I will not fear. On common favor, let's look at the book of Nehemiah chapter 2 from verse 1 to 6, the message version. Nehemiah 2, 1 to 6. We're talking about becoming what? Unstoppable. He says, it was the month of Nisan in the 20th year of Ataxasis the king. At the hour for serving wine, I brought it in and gave it to the king. I had never been hung dog, meaning sour puss or maybe sad, in his presence before. So he asked me, why the long face? You are not sick, are you? Or are you depressed? <laughs> 
That made, me all the more that made me all the more agitated. I said, long live the king, and why shouldn't I be depressed when the city, the city where all my family is buried is in ruins, and the city gates have been reduced to cinders. Then the king said, asked me, he asked me, so what do you want? The king asked him. The person in charge of the department that you need the papers from, said, I'm giving you a blank check. What do you want? The thing you've been praying for all these years, you get to where you're supposed to get it, and somebody just opens the door. Meanwhile, they told you that door wouldn't open. 100 people had told you you'd heard people's testimonies, and the door just opened for you, and they just said, come in. Have you ever been at a door that you know that you need access to that door. And if you don't know somebody on the inside, you can never get access to that door. But somebody is coming from the outside, and suddenly they just open the door for you. And they say, oh, come in, come in. And you're like, I am in this space? Nehemiah was asked by the king, what do you want me to do for you? Look, look at what Nehemiah did. The Bible says, from verse 4 to 5, and he says, praying under my breast to the God of heaven. Maybe you do that too. I do it. I go to places that I know things are difficult and I begin to say, Rebo shatali agadali agaba. Rima seketeli egebo. Lord, I know you are in this with me. Lord God, I know you are here for me. Even if, if it's for my children, I'm praying for them. Lord God, in this thing we came to do, Lord God, you will make a way for my child. Father, Lord God, oh, I know that it's difficult, but nothing is too hard for you to do. Rebo shateli agadaba yege seketeli. He was doing that and he was answering the king. He was doing that because Nehemiah remained connected to God at all times because he knew he needed the power of God. He says, if it pleased the king, and the king thinks well of me. Send me to the Judah, to the city where my family is buried, so that I can rebuild it. This became his vision. The king with the queen sitting alongside him said, how long will your work take? And when would you expect to return? You give me your date. I don't have any date for you. I'm not going to cramp your style. I'm giving you an open check. Go for as long as you want to. Do as long, whatever it is you want to do. Just let me let you know that I am backing you up no matter where you go. No matter what you do, I am on your case. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Does that sound like God to you? No matter the journey you take in 2022, God says as long as you remain connected to me, I will make the crooked path straight for you. I will go before you and make every path straight. I will give you thorough fare in the name of Jesus. That will be your testimony. God is asking you the question, do you, what do you want from me? Choose 30 minutes right now and begin to ask him for what you want from him. In 2022, say, Father, open uncommon doors for me. Say, Father, this issue that I am looking unto you for, according to your word today, I stand upon your word and upon the open way that you have made for me. And I say, make it happen. My Lord and my God, let it come to pass in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I'm asking you because you said, what do you want from me? Jehovah, arise for my sake. Jehovah, do it. The set time, the time to favor me it is now it is now lord god do not let me go empty-handed in 2022 these plans i have played before you concerning my marriage concerning my children concerning my career concerning my business lord let them come to pass according to your word let it be unto me in the name of jesus in jesus name we pray so shall it be for you in jesus name <laughs> He said, I gave him a time, and the king gave his approval to send me. It wasn't the king's thing. It wasn't the king's vision. It wasn't anything concerning the king. It was all about Nehemiah. And Nehemiah was only a slave, a cupbearer. He is a slave that was held captive. He was caught in battle and brought to Susa. And he had so much leverage with the king. Are you hearing me, somebody? For anybody who is an immigrant, I'm telling you there's nothing, no door God cannot open unto you. There is nothing you want, I don't care what accent you have, that God cannot use you for or cannot do for you. Nehemiah ran with God and it made unusual help available to him. Unusual help. Nehemiah 2.7-9. Nehemiah 2, 7 to 9. Then I said, <laughs> as if what the king said or did was not enough. He said, if it pleased the king, now provide me with letters to the governors across the Euphrates that authorize my travel through to Judah. Give me access. And also give me an order that while we're at it, I know I said I wanted this, so please can you add this and some cherry on top? And can you also put some frosting? Oh, okay, why don't you? 
You know, some of us, when we come to places, we become timid. We're like, oh, they already gave me this thing. Let me just go with the little thing. But God is saying, expand your capacity. God is saying, enlarge your coast. Enlarge the tent of your borders. God is saying, do this. Stretch forth the, your curtains. He says, stretch it wide. Have an open mouth, and I am big enough to fill it. That is what God is saying. Don't shortchange yourself. God has opened the door. He has sent the word. He said, I'm doing a new thing. Whatsoever it is you want is a new thing that God can do. God Almighty can do all things. Ephesians 3.20, he said, now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ever ask or imagine, according to the power that is within you. Don't shortchange yourself. Ask him anything and everything. What do you want to become? Who do you want to be? My husband showed me something on YouTube yesterday. Somebody had this problem and she said, He's, the guy is from Nigeria. He said, I've always wanted to live by the river. This sprawling mansion by the river. And I said to myself, wow. When they showed the view of that house, he's not as old as me. He just got married not too long ago. He hasn't been in the U.S. as long as I've been. But he had an appetite. The appetite you have is going to determine how much you are able to eat. It's going to determine what you ask for. When you have a plate of food, many of us eat dregs. We eat just a little. You know why? Because we don't have an appetite. What God is saying is, behold, I do a new thing. He said, when God makes ways in the wilderness, do you know what that means? Places where there was nothing. In wilderness, there's thick bush. There's thick, everything is, 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 is tight. You can't really have access. But God said, I will clear the path for you. Did you not see how I cleared the path for the children of Israel? I will part every, I will part every path for you. You will walk through on dry land. You will walk through all the tribulations, all the troubles, and you will not even smell like smoke, like the three Hebrew boys. He said, there is nothing I cannot do for you only if you have a large appetite the question i have for you this morning is do you have appetite enough to take in the things that god has prepared what do you see of yourself who do you see of yourself who do you see your god as do you see him as the almighty god the one who the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to the one who said there was nothing made on earth that was made without me making it the one who says <laughs> he says that everything that you see far as your eyes can see he told abraham he said i will give it to you uh, why are you shortchanging yourself? I looked at that house yesterday and something rose up in me. And my husband and I, we spoke. And I said, to, I said to myself, I said, so if this guy can have this kind of dream, the question is, are your dreams big? And then I began to think of Pastor Tola yesterday night. And I said to myself, when, you know, I, I, I taught in membership class yesterday and I saw the video again. You know, sometimes you have to be reminded of the things that, you are, that is around you, but you've taken advantage of. You've not taken, or you've, you've taken advantage of them in that you are not really, you they become too familiar to you. So you're not seeing the miracle in them anymore. Every time you and I step onto this premises, it is a miracle because once somebody obeyed God and began to run with God, God began to expand and you, was, you were seeing it as we were going on from year one. You were seeing it. Whatever year you came into this church, you started to join that vision. You saw things begin to move. He said, we're going to buy the land across we bought it. He said, we're going to build the glory center we built it. He said, we're going to expand the parking lot we expanded it. The question I'm asking you today is, what do you see and what appetite do you have? Do you have the appetite to say, God, more? I want more. Do more for me. Use me for your glory. The Bible says, greater works than this shall you do. Jesus said, because I go to the Father. He said that, let men see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. If God is not yet being glorified in our lives, it's because we have shortchanged God and our appetite is too small. It's time to enlighten the cost of your territory. It's time to enlarge your borders. It's time to strike the stakes. It's time to pull the curtains. It's time to say, God, do it in my life. I want more. I want more. He said, authorize my travel through to Judah. Give me an order for Asaph, keeper of the king's forest, to supply me with timber for the beams of the temple fortress, the wall of the city, and the house where I will be living. Don't do it only for the house of God. Do it for me. Because some of us are too spiritual. He said, while you're doing it, this thing God gave me, this vision God gave me, to do for you, for God. While you're doing it, don't let my own life put you to disrepute. 
Yes, yes. Give me something for my house. Don't let my children become the dregs of society. Give me something for my house. Don't let my husband or my spouse die young. Give me something for my house. Don't let the dreams and the visions that I have die while I'm taking care of your business. Lord, don't let me be like that prophet that Elisha had to do something for his wife so that the children would not be taken by those who want to take them to pay as ransom for the money borrowed. Please, Lord, don't let me go empty. If you're a leader in the house, you know that is your prayer. But we know we serve a God who is a rewarder. Oh, Pastor Tola tells me this all the time. God is a rewarder. He, is a, he will tell me, Bumi, it's okay. God is a rewarder. God is a rewarder. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And he's also a rewarder of those who will say no. Those who have faith. The Bible says, by faith. He says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He says, by faith, the elders obtained a good reward. They obtained it by faith. They went to God and said, I want it. They obtained a good reward. And I think I only have time for one more. We'll continue. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. Run with God in 2022 and you will not be put to shame. Run with God in 2022 and you will achieve your destiny. Run with God in 2022 and you will see your home come together. Run with God in 2022 and you will see the business flourish. Run with God in 2022 and you will see your head lifted. Run with God in 2022 and get ready for promotion. Get ready for elevation. And watch everything the enemy meant for evil in 2020 and 2021. <laughs> watch it turn around for your good. Because God said, I will overturn. I will overturn. I will overturn until it becomes your turn. Hallelujah. Run with God. Don't leave him behind. You need him badly. David said, I've esteemed your word more than my necessary food. He said, I would have sinned if I had not kept your word. Run with God. Study his word. Take it to the difficulties of your life. The Bible says, is my word not a hammer to break down things into pieces? Is my word not like fire to consume to obstacles and tribulations and trials? Run with God. You can never be put to shame. Nobody does business with God and goes, and, and goes without a reward. You can never do business with God and not run on a huge profit until, until there was no more vessel. The oil didn't continue, didn't stop flowing. Until your appetite becomes large enough to take everything that God wants to do in your life. Don't stop. Don't stop, because God is not interested in waste. Mm -mm. Just remember that if I run with God, <laughs> I can never miss it. God spoke this to me, I think about last week, run with me. And that was what reminded me about Nehemiah. And we're still going to look at the story of Nehemiah. But I'm going to share one more with you today. Somebody say passion. passion. Say passion. 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 Run with passion. Run with passion. Passion is defined as a feeling of intense enthusiasm or compelling desire for someone or something. Passion is defined as a feeling of intense enthusiasm or compelling desire for someone or something. Passion is zeal. Somebody say zeal. Passion is enthusiasm. Passion is fervency. Remember that scripture? The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous what? Power available. That is what? Dynamic in its working. That's the kind of life I want, a dynamic life. A life that gets better and better and better and better. They go from strength to strength and glory to glory until each of them appear before God in Zion. A life that gets better. Looking into the glass as to beholding the image of God, they continue to move from glory to glory to glory. For the path of the righteous is as a shining light, shining brighter and brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. That's what I want for my life. How about you? But without passion, it is impossible. Without zeal, it is impossible. Without yearning, it is impossible. Because passion makes you unstoppable. If you see a man or a woman with passion, if you don't take care, they will roll you over. 
You and I see pastor many of the times, especially when he's talking about something we're working on as a church, as spiritual growth. And he, he, he is passionate. Because without passion, you can never achieve anything in life. The thing with life is that it never gives you what you deserve. It always gives you only what you demand. And a man or a woman without passion, asking, demanding, can't make it. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 11 to 16. Nehemiah 2, 11 to 16, the message version still. He says, and so I arrived in Jerusalem after I had been there three days. I got up in the middle of the night. Hey, how many people have heard burn the midnight oil? Burn the midnight oil. Give it whatever it's going to take for you to get it. Only people with passion burn the midnight oil. Only people who are saying I must get it. Only, we, we call them ethicals when we were in school. That's the English version. I just spoke English. Ethicals. They are the people who want to bamba. They want to chill with the big boys. So they are running. They are running. If you don't take care, they will run you over. They have their eye on the prize. Passionate. Said, I got up in the middle of the night. I and a few men who were with me. I hadn't told anyone what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. The only animal with us was the one I was riding. Under cover of night, my goodness. It tells me if you cannot wake up in the night to focus on your dreams, you're still joking. He says, under cover of night, I went past the valley gate towards the dragon's fountain, to the dung gate, looking over the walls of Jerusalem, which had been broken through and whose gates had been burned up. I then crossed to the fountain gate. I kept on going. My passion kept on driving me and headed for the king's pool, but there wasn't enough room for the donkey I was riding to get through get through so I went up the valley in the dark continuing my inspection of the wall I went up onto the valley in the dark in the dark I didn't care who was sleeping I woke up and I went up the valley in the dark continuing my inspection of the wall I came back in through the valley gate the local officials had no idea where I'd gone or what I was doing I hadn't breathed a word to the Jews the priests the nobles the local officials or anyone else who would be working on the job Nehemiah could not, could not sleep. He had a burning passion for the mission that God had given him. God has put something new in your heart and mind to do in 2022. And we too may need to get up in the middle of the night. All this sleeping too much is too much. See, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the arms. Remember last week I said it? And poverty comes upon the person like an armed man. Yes, it's time to get up. Even praying, praying at midnight, very effective. Very effective. Nobody, no distraction, nobody to, to struggle with you. Nothing. Hunger is not what you're trying to do because you're not trying to eat in the middle of the night. Right? <laughs> so all those things that tend to present themselves as obstacles. The child saying, mommy, mommy, daddy, daddy. Uh -uh. The calls that you will have received from somebody, they're sleeping. Let passion get us up. Let passion drive us. Passion is a driver. Apostle Paul said in Philippians 3.12, as I close, the passion translation. He says, I admit that I have not yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me to make me his own. Do you want to lay hold of what God wants to do in your life? Do you? Only about six people on this side two people on that side then burn with passion passion inspires passion motivates the passion of the salesman is what made you drive that car uh -huh. and you were even saying to yourself they gave me a good rate mm. yeah right the house you're living in it is passion. The phone you're holding, they showed the ad, and the new one coming, and they so sold it to you and I, that what do you want for Christmas? Oh, iPhone 60. <laughs> Meanwhile, just as soon as you're getting it, iPhone 65. 
is already in the works. But when you hold it, something is, is sweet in you. Passion is a driver. Passion drove Nehemiah to do all those things in the middle of the night. If you work, it will work it, you know. If you work it, it will work. But you need passion as we rise up to our feet this morning. You need passion. You need passion. You need a driver. You need a motivator. You need fire under you. Lift your voice and say, Father, revive passion in me to fulfill the purpose that you have called me. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Pray with passion. Pray with fire. Father, revive fire. Revive passion in me. Help me, Lord God, to wake up when I'm supposed to wake up. Help me, Lord God, to put my hands on the plow and not look back. Help me, Lord God, to sustain the momentum, oh God. Give me passion to pursue the goal, the objective, the vision, the mission. Lord God, cause me to burn. Cause me to burn. Cause me to burn with passion in 2022 in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord God Almighty, revive passion in me, oh God. Hey, Kadalia Gaboshataya Gataya. Maleketelia Geboshataya. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. You know what, true worship? I used to sing in true worship. I used to be the praise worship leader for Jesus House Baltimore, for those who don't know. I used to be the pastor over the choir. Isn't it easy to know when somebody has lost passion? When they come for rehearsal, if they're not making trouble, they're just sitting there. Everybody's asking them, oh, how are you? I don't know, you know. What does somebody who loses passion do? They demotivate other people. Because passion is contagious. Yes, and lack of it also is contagious. So watch the people who you are around. And watch the people who are around you. So that they don't kill your passion lift your voice and say father this year 2022 remove every passion killer on my path to destiny in the name of Jesus lift your voice and begin to pray my father and my God I pray in the name of Jesus anything anyone any situation any circumstance that wants to kill my passion Lord God Almighty remove from my path this year in the name of Jesus anything that wants to stop the new thing anything that wants to kill the new thing that you want to do in my life oh God remove that from me in the name of Jesus thank you Lord so shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, one thing that I know is that when you run after your dream, okay, let me tell you what God said to me. You will never fulfill your dream alone and you will never fulfill your dream And I will never fulfill your dream alone. That was it. Do you know that God cannot fulfill your dream alone? That everything you and I do with God is a partnership? If God says to Abraham, leave your father and your mother and go to a land that I will show you, I will make you a father of many nations. As the stars are in the sky, so shall your children be. As the sand by the seashore, so shall your generations be. And Abraham never got up. Do you know it will never come to pass? What will happen is God will just look for somebody else. So this year you are going to pray and say, Father, I have decided to walk with you. My passion is alive. I want to run with you. Do what you want to do and give me the strength to do what I need to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift your voice and begin to pray. Lord God Almighty, I know you, you count the power of partnership. Oh Lord God Almighty has something huge Therefore Lord God Almighty Do what you have to do And give me the grace to do what I need to do I don't want to burn out oh God I don't want to burn out of passion oh God in June I don't want to burn out of passion Lord in September Do what you want to do And give me the strength to do what I need to do Thank you Lord God In Jesus name we pray All eyes closed, all heads bowed We talked about running with God mostly because that's like the most important thing according to Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 when you keep first things first every other thing 
doesn't have a choice but to fall into place. I want you to know, whether you're watching us online or you're, or you're on site, if you don't have Jesus, you have nothing. That's the truth. According to John 15, 5, if you are not staying in Christ, you can do nothing. It may look like things are working, but it's just for a minute. The devil has a way of making things look like it's working, but he really isn't. I want you to know that Jesus loves you and that he's calling you because he wants to run with you too. He wants to hold you by his righteous right hand and lead you. He wants to do a new thing in your life. And so if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have not yet accepted him. You've not yet admitted your sins and you've not yet said, God, I need help. I want you to know that God wants you. He's standing at the door of your heart right now and he's speaking to you. If that is you, I want you to lift up your hands in the sanctuary. God wants to run with you, but if you've not yet accepted him, lift up your hands. I just want to pray with you right where you are. And if you are online joining us as well, and that is the situation, or maybe you used to follow Christ, but things fell apart and you want to come back to him. You want to rededicate your life to him. I want you also to lift your voice, your hand up right where you are, because God sees it. What, you, what he sees is your acceptance of the fact that he is God and that you are willing to be under his tabernacle, hiding under him, he being your father and you being his child. And so I pray in the name of Jesus that as many as are indicating that father, they want to come into your kingdom. I pray that you will forgive their sins. I pray that you will cleanse them of all unrighteousness. I pray Lord God almighty that father write their names in the Lamb's book of life in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you will lead them Lord God and let them follow you. Oh Lord and at the end of everything, let them not miss that glorious reward in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Lord and our King. You are so good to us. You are so kind to us. You are so magnificent. You are so holy, so righteous, so faithful, so gracious, wonderful, beautiful, excellent, victorious God. And so we are victorious people. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. God bless you. You may take your seat. It's time for us to give our tithes and offerings. It's time for us to show our obedience to God. It's time for us to thank God for that which he has done. And it's time for us to give to God what belongs to him and also to give him something to work with. Our tithes are 10% of our income. If you're joining us online, you too can do it. Soon they are going to be on the screen, the different platforms through which you can give. You can give via Zelle, via PayPal. You can give via text to give or even by cash app and if you're in the house you can give uh, through cash or check the ushers are going around with envelopes please lift up your hands if they're not around you so they can come to you thank you there's a hand lifted back there please lift up your thank you and hands all over so please check out for them ushers thank you and you can bring it to the front and drop it in the baskets as you do so may God Almighty who promised a reward for obedience reward you in the name of Jesus. You will never go hungry in Jesus name. Awesome true worship. Also if you want to give your pledge, you made a pledge during 14 days of glory, please do so as well. Thank you. Thank you.
so sure you know you know my age Lord from the start you know my heart everybody say I need you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's take our seats. Amen. Father, we thank you for the offering. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so at this point, we never like to end our services without acknowledging the presence of some special people. If this is your first time in Jesus' house, Baltimore, can you please stand up on your feet? Come on, put your hands together for them. If this is your first time, can we see you rise up? Rise up to your feet this morning. Amen. Is there anyone there? Can I see you wave? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Awesome. Please remain standing. Remain standing. Um, thank you for joining us this morning in church. We know that there are several churches around that you could have picked anyone to go to, but you decided to join us this morning, so we say thank you. Thank you for coming. At Jesus House Baltimore, our mission is to actually motivate people to maximize their God-given potentials, and that's what we do. Um, I know you've heard that word this morning, and it has transformed your life already. If you're looking for a, a church to, to be in and a place to fellowship, please know that we would encourage you to actually become a member of the church. Amen. Our senior pastors, Pastor Tola and Pastor Kofo, would love to be your pastors. Amen. Uh, we do have a gift for you, and you would actually see our guest services team in the aisles. They also want to tell you a little bit more about Jesus House Baltimore. So please, whatever you have with you, if you have your Bibles, your purses, your phones, just pick them right now. Uh, they're in the aisles. They're going to guide you to our lobby where they will give you those gifts and tell you more about Jesus House Baltimore. So put your hands together for them as we actually usher them out at this moment. Amen. And for our online audience, Thank you for joining us today. We encourage you to actually, if you look on your screen, you would actually see a QR code that you can scan. Fill out that card, and one of the guest service team will get in touch with you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, and we look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Have you been blessed today? Run with God. Run with passion. That will be our testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. And I believe one or two of us will do that thing this week, this month, this year, so that we we'll enjoy a new thing. Uh, the next call is for membership drive. Maybe today is your first day. You've been coming for weeks, for months, for years, and you decide, you know what? I want to be part of this family. This family enjoy a lot of benefits, and if you are that person, please can you signify by standing up? If you want to be a member, if you want to be identified as a member of Jesus House Baltimore, anyone? Anyone? We members, we have... A lot of job to do to invite others and for those people watching with uh, worshiping with us online there's a qr code can you take off your phone and please scan it and complete it in entirety and our membership team will get back to you thank you for doing that shall we rise up as we close this service father we thank you we we'll bless your name. We exalt your name. I got a confirmation of this word that I had this morning, and I want to share it with you. According to Isaiah 41:10, 10, 
Amplified Version. I'm going to read specifically. It says, do not fear anything, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Hmm. Be assured, I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand. A hand of justice, a hand of power, a hand of victory, a hand of salvation. Let it be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. And lastly, if you want to sign up for life group, the table is at the back. Please go there and sign up. God bless you and have a wonderful week.